four more awards, but three awards on the website one. How come I don't have a thing up there? Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the 10 Minute Topic. I'm your host, Shan Coughlin, he- Coughlin here with my co host, Mr. Brian Stephan, the golfmonger. Hi. I'm great. How are you? I'm sure you're Shane Coughlin. I am sure I'm Shane Coughlin. Okay. And um, I didn't set the timer, but I, I did just set it. Um, our producer said that if it's a 10 minute topic, it better be 10 minutes. Yeah, now we have 7 9 30 because you start late. So, the topic today, Mr. Stefan, yes. Mr. Golfmonger, is um, I've been noticing a trend and it's escalating. Golf professionals are committing to golf tournaments, and then what I would consider as a, a viewer and a fan, um, at the last minute, they are declining to play or, or pulling out of the withdrawing. tournament, withdrawing from the tournament. And I want to know your opinion on this, and when is it okay, in our opinions, and when is it not okay to make that call? Go. Well, obviously, then, if you have an injury, you can't play. Uh, A new injury, you mean? You have something to play. When you, you, know, you injure yourself in practice, whatever, get a car accident. Get, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. slip, come out of the shower, I mean, whatever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can't play. I mean, that's all sport to sports. That happens. Right. You know, guys get scratched on the lineup for a football game, baseball game. You know, that, that happens. You can't really avoid that. Uh, but I, I know what you're talking about. There's a lot of phantom injuries out there. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I strained my back working out. Yeah. Um, what did your doctor say? <laughs> I mean, it's almost like when you, when you miss school. Yeah. You know, and the reason that pops in my head is, you know, school's about, you know, when, you know, when your kid, the other, my, my son the other day was school, and, you know, kind of get a teacher's excuse. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe think about, you know, and if you miss too many, you know, you get punished and all that. Well, if you withdraw off too many tournaments, should you be punished? Li- held liable. Not liable. accountable. How can you be held accountable? Well, Professional athletes, you know, normally it comes down to, like, you get fined or, or, or whatever. Or your sponsors stop paying you. Right. Well, but, <laughs> you, you know, here's, well, yeah, I mean, because individual golfers are business. They're, they're, they're their own enterprise. Right. They are independent contractors. Right. Uh, you know, since TV wants to sponsor me to play golf, they're not sponsoring a whole bunch of people, right. they're sponsoring me. Right. So if I don't show up, you know, and they budget out, oh, we're going to pay you X, X money a year, you know, you're going to play in 45 golf tournaments. Mm-hmm. Well, if I skip four of them, then I shorted them. 10%. Yeah, I shorted them 10%. And, you know, where's where's that coming to play? I mean, that's a whole nother story that the golf fan really doesn't care about. But I just wanted to bring that point right. up before we get deeper into this. Uh, but it's a valid point because as a golf fan, you know, I'm if I'm going to watch a tournament, if I buy a ticket right. for a tournament, it's like the, the, we had this in the NBA. You know, if you buy a ticket to a game, you expect to see the players play. You know, if you buy a ticket to a golf tournament and there's a list of players right. who are going to be playing, you know, you're making your purchase based on a – uh, ba- a level of entertainment you feel right. like you're going to get, and then if all of a sudden three, four, five, six people withdraw, I mean, it, it affects it. It does, but having worked in sports myself, mm-hmm. I had this conversation with fans. Mm-hmm. I'm not selling the team. I'm not selling the player. I'm selling the game. But in so you're buying, the yeah, but you're still buying a ticket to the golf tournament. You're not buying a ticket to see one golfer. You may have made that decision mm-hmm. personally. Right. I'm only going because I want to go see Roy McIlroy. Right. Or I want to go see Ricky Fowler. Mm-hmm. Or I want to go see Jordan Spieth. Because mm-hmm. he's going to be in the field. Right. And something happens, and he's not playing. You feel bummed out, cheated as a fan. Or he shoots at 80. Or, well, that, that's a whole other story. First of all, what if you buy it? The only way to guarantee to see your guys to go on Thursday or Friday. Because if they miss the cut and you bought a ticket Saturday, assuming that yeah. he's a good golfer, you're out of luck. So it's kind of the same thing. You know, it's it's also like it's raining. I want my money back. <laughs> it's an outdoor event. Right. You know, 
I, but from the fan perspective, golf is an individual sport, and people do want to see the individuals. And obviously, let's face it, the tournament, the TV ratings, the ticket sales, everything is better when the big dogs are playing. Mm-hmm. So when Tiger's in the field, everything goes up. When Rory's around, things go up. When Jordan, you know, we're starting to see Jordan Spieth, you know, we got all these new guys, Ricky Fowler, so on and so forth. So when guys withdraw for whatever the reason is, and generally it's an injury thing, you know, uh, it it does, it can affect the fans. Uh, and as far as how do you hold the players accountable? The hard part of holding the players accountable is the PGA Tour is not held accountable. True. They don't have to disclose to the public why any infractions that golfers uh, uh, do with in the player comment policy that may cause them to be suspended. Right. Or, I mean, if you look back, you know, um, you know, all oh, the guys are not playing for a month. He's just choosing not to be in the field. And, and that's the thing. You don't have to play. Right. So... You know, the whole thing with Dustin Johnson last year when he took out six months. Some people said he was suspended. Some people, you know, he said he was just left. You don't know because the tour doesn't have to. Right, but that's different. I'm talking, no, about, somebody, different. No, I'm it, talking about somebody pulling out of a tournament like the day before right. or two days before. Right. I think that's completely different. But you don't know why they're pulling out. They say they're injured. Maybe they just don't feel like playing. Well, and, and that's what I'm saying. I think. I know, but if the tour is not going to be held accountable for why they don't let people play, how can they hold the players accountable for giving proper reasons for why they don't play? So this is what I'm saying. I think that if somebody pulls out of a tournament, the fans who have, at least the ones who've purchased tickets somehow, or deserve to know why. Well, they tell you why. Well, I mean, they deserve to know really why. Yeah, but there's no way out of my back. My doctor says I can't play, or I shouldn't play. There's no way to know the, what the real reason is. I see what you get. All at. injuries, though, or just someone just of course they're not all injuries. Yeah. Of course they're not. When yeah. a guy when a guy withdraws after the first round when he shoots 80, like Jeff said, yeah. and then mysteriously he's got a wrist injury. No, he didn't. He is playing so bad he knows he's going to miss the cut. He doesn't want to waste his time showing up on Friday. He wants to get out of Dodge and either go home or get to the next city where they're playing the next tournament and start practicing. Why that is, is it. Why isn't that okay? They, it's, it's not okay. Well, shouldn't they which, be able to allow to do that then? They shouldn't be, but the tour allows them to do it. Well, I'm saying shouldn't they? I don't think they should. I mean, you got to play. If you, if you sign up, well, you play, But that's play. different but before see, pulling out the day before and then pulling out in the middle of the tournament. Right. You know, when it's blatantly obvious that the reason that you're pulling out is because you shot 80. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the winner and the leader is 8 under, and you know there's no way. you got to shoot 55 the next day to make the cut. The guys will draw. Right. And, and they claim sickness or, or you know, an injury of some sort or whatever, but yet they're teed up the next week. It's, it's or the crap. next day somewhere. It's, well, well, but we don't see them until, yeah. you know, yeah. on the tournament the next week. It's um, it's definitely a problem, and a lot of times you see it with just, you know, there's inclement weather. All of a sudden, there's a mass of guys withdrawing because they want to play in the rain. Like, if you know it's going to be four days of just a, so- a soaker, you see seven or eight guys withdraw. Now, it does make the field smaller because there's always alternates out there waiting to for play. The, for their shot. For their shot, guys that have qualified as first, second, third, fourth, fifth, you know, whatever happens. Uh, some t- tournaments all have different numbers of alternates that they have guys waiting, right. you know, to, to play. Right. And, you know, generally, there's probably guys that pull out all the time and other guys step in and take their place. But if they're not names, we don't even know about it. Right. I would venture that happens every week. But it might be a 140th ranked guy in the world, and we don't even know who it is. The, the, I mean, we might know as golf media folk, but right. I don't care if Stephen Bowditch isn't playing and, and – um, some other no-name guy is, yeah. is playing as well, and you know, not a household name. I don't care. Right. I didn't know they were in the field in the first place because when I looked to see who's in the field, generally you look to see you start at the top of the list and work your way down mm-hmm. as far as popularity goes. So, all right. Well, it's an interesting topic. I'm glad we got to talk a little bit we about it. We have more time to talk about it another time. We do. I think I hope that it it, um, it scratched the surface of of this because I do think to me it's like a concert. You know, you buy a ticket to go to a concert. The person singing, the lead singer doesn't show up. The band doesn't play <laughs> the whole thing. So, you know, I, I don't know how to, uh, you're right. I don't know what, what works, but something's got to be done because we're seeing it more and more and more. Yeah. All right. We are out of time.
We are staying on time, Jeff. So this edition of 10-Minute Topic has been produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out our featured golf course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and more. If you need help with your next golf vacation, tweet. Hashtag just call Dave and he'll find you or give us a call on a real phone at 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. You can also chat with us on the website, thegolfdirector.com. All of our TGD programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. So to catch up on a show you might have missed, click on the TGD radio and TGD TV tabs in the menu at thegolfdirector.com. And we're now available on over 1 billion devices through iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and on the Myrtle Beach Golf app. So download that today. This is Shane Coughlin. And on behalf of my co-host, Mr. Brian Stephan, the golf monger. Thank you, Brian. And Jeff behind the glass. We thank you for tuning in. There's more TGD golf news and information coming up next, so don't go anywhere.